The squire of 79 Wistful Vista is not the man to do things by halves. An ordinary fellow might curl up some afternoon with a good book. But our hero goes all the way and curls up with 50 or 60 of them. As we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Heavenly days, McGee. What goes on here? Huh? Looks like an explosion in the public library. <laughs> well, you know how bad that hall closet needs straightening out. McGee, don't tell me. No. You... No, no. I got started too late for that, so... I decided to straighten out the bookcase instead. My gosh, I never knew we had so many books. Well, we wouldn't have if you'd return the ones you borrowed. <laughs> What's the big book you're sitting on there? Oh, this one, I don't know. It's a Swedish book. I can't read Swedish. What's the title? Glib to Hug. <laughs> Glib to Hug? Why, yeah. that's not Swedish, silly. Huh? That's part of a set of encyclopedias. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So it is. Yep. Sure. That's the one I borrowed from Doc Gamble the time I was trying to find out how to make hoss and pepper. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, gun it, I wish I could... Oh, here it is. Here's what? The book I got for my birthday last week from old Fred Nittany of Star Rock, Illinois. You've heard me speak of Fred. Well, <laughs> who hasn't? What was the name of the book he gave you? Oh, some dull thing about the milk industry in the Solomon Islands. Is that what it's about? Sure, look at the title. Guadalcanal Dairy. <laughs> No, dearie, that's diary. Huh? Oh. Hey, here's a swell little book, Molly. 10,000 Queer Quiz Questions. That's, that's the one I got for subscribing to Zombie Comics. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> yes, and a fascinating book, too. Oh, yes. Sample question, how do you get down off an elephant? Mm -hmm. Sample answer, you don't get down off an elephant. You get down off a duck. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the first time I heard that when I choked on my pablum. Yeah. <laughs> Mine, too. I thought it was kind of cute myself. <laughs> I saw... Hey, here's a book I'm glad we got. What is it? Ladies and Gentlemen's Complete Etiquette. Got all the answers on how not to make a mug out of yourself. <laughs> Tells you how to dress for every occasion. Look. Let me see it. Hmm. How to dress for the opera. Yeah. The lady goes to the opera to see and be seen, and her dress must be adopted with a full realization of the thousands of gaslights which will bring out its merits and defects. And... Gaslights? Heavenly days. When was this printed? 1877. <laughs> 1877? Well, it's no good now, dearie. You know, the wasp waist has given way to the horned hip. <laughs> what do you mean, it's no good? Etiquette don't change. I contend that this etiquette book is just as good today as it was 65 years ago. Well, it could be, dearie. But a few new problems have come up since then. What do you mean? Like, for instance, uh, if a girl runs away from her husband, who gets custody of the chew coupons? <laughs> Look, Molly, it ain't the petty little petty rules. It's the principles. <laughs> By George, if everybody acted according to etiquette, it'd be a much better world in which to live in. Well, go ahead, dearie. Start the ball rolling. I shall. Well, fine. Now, finish picking up those books, please. The house looks like a shambles. I don't Forgive see... me, my dear, but I must ask you to leave the room. Huh? Why? It would be unseemly for a lady to remain, as I am about to remove my coat and roll up my sleeves, thus exposing my nude bicep. Oh! <laughs> Come, let me see you to the door. Now, look here, McGee. If you think for one minute that I'm going to put on a bustle and sit around waiting for a stereoptic and show... Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Oh, hello there, Alice. May I come in? Pray do, child. Did you drop something, Mr. McGee? No. <laughs> He's just bowing from the waist, Alice. He's suffering from a sudden rush of etiquette. Oh. You slept well, I trust, Miss Alice? Slept well. Jeepers, my dear, I was out like a cork. <laughs> the body didn't even twitch for eight solid hours. And I mean solid, pet. Uh, did I get anything on the Amici from the characters? Well, if you mean, did you get any phone calls, Alice? Yes, you did. The last one from Douglas. I sincerely trust, my dear, that you met this young man in a proper way. Formally introduced, I mean, to trustworthy friends or relatives. Oh, dear. Uh, are you kidding, Pops? Why, I've known Doug for simply days. He thinks I'm wonderful. He says I'm the big ripple in his carpool. <laughs> <laughs> And what is the young swine or swain's background? 
If I may inquire, Miss Alice? Background? Criminy Doug's got more background than a scenic railway. Mm. And manners? Why, when we're at a dance, Doug never says, let's cut one, kid, or what do you say we hurl a hip? He stands up and bows and says, with your kind cooperation, stupid, we'll dumbfound the natives with a mad minuet. <laughs> Doug is really an ape, my dears, but smooth. Well, he sounds charming, all right. College man, Miss Alice? Oh, yes. He worked his way through the university playing the drums for parties. He's a Phi Beta Krupa. <laughs> it appears, my dear, that the young gentleman's background is impeccable. Well, uh, who's second? <laughs> However, and I trust you will not take the suggestion amiss... <laughs> Perhaps you will persuade the youth that good manners demand he refrain from arousing the household at unseemly hours by means of the telephone. Oh, you mean tell Doug to lay off beating his gums over the wire at the crack of noon. Mm. Oh, but I have told him, Mr. McGee, and I told him when he calls for me never to use the doorbell. Well, how will he let you know he's here? Set fire to the front porch? <laughs> oh, no, my dear. He's going to toss a pebble at my window. That way it won't disturb anyone but me. Delightful, my mm. child. Delightful. Tossing a pebble at the lattice window of one's fair lady is an honorable and romantic custom, and I thoroughly approve of it. Ooh. Oh. oh, there's Doug now. Oh. <laughs> and he hit the wrong window. Okay. Well, goodbye now. <laughs> Boy, to think how I've been stumbling through life like an unmanly goof. Oh, let's see now. If a person wishes to be served more tea or coffee, he should place his spoon in the saucer. Otherwise, let it remain in the cup. <laughs> so you see, Molly, you're always bawling me out for leaving my spoon in the cup. Well, that book was published in 1877, dearie. The rules have changed slightly. Nowadays, if you leave your spoon in your cup, you're liable to lose your social standing to say nothing of your right eye. <laughs> Come, come, my good spouse. <laughs> Surely one can't dismiss the fact that good manners in 1877 are still good manners yet in 1943. Whale feathers, dearie. 1877 was a very prissy period. Hmm? In those days, a dog would lie in the sun in trousers. Pants were considered indelicate. <laughs> Well, that may be so, but and I... And women didn't have figures then either. They huh? had shapes. And what shapes? You know, it took 70 years to go from Gosser to Goddard. <laughs> well, I still maintain... Although that... men haven't changed much, except they were timber wolves in those days. Huh? They all carried canes. <laughs> still and all, you got to admit... Oh, no, McGee, you can't sell me on 1877. You can have your fancy etiquette if you like. Somebody's the door, dearie. Mm -hmm. Now, according to the book, who answers it? The lady or the gentleman of the house? My no, gosh, I don't know. I'll look at this. Thing. How to write a letter of introduction? Never cheat while playing with... Hurry up now. Proper manner of courtship. Mm -hmm. Better hurry, McGee. Huh? Why don't you just take a gamble and holler, come in? No, no, no. Might as well do this thing right. Oh, here it is. It says, in the well-organized household, the butler admits callers and receives calling cards on a silver tray. <laughs> Well, we haven't got a butler, and would a pie tin do? Maybe I'd better run up and put on my tuxedo. We could at least fix it so that... Oh, for goodness sakes. Come in. Hello, Molly. Hiya, pal. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Good afternoon, my dear fellow. Decent of you to stop by. Your card, please. My card, chum? Your card, your card. Unless, of course, my good man, this is a business call. In which case, I shall ask you to go around to the tradesman's entrance. Well, there's nothing in my arrangement with Racine that says I have to put up with this kind of panucci. I'll see you later, folks. No, no, don't go, Mr. Wilcox. This isn't serious. Come on. Do come in. All right, I will. And if you want my card, here. Ah, good lad. Oh, my, a nice-looking card, too, Mr. Wilcox. Harlow Wilcox, representing S.C. Johnson & Son, Incorporated, makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry... Racing, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Read the other side. Little verse I wrote myself. All right. Waxing varnish, enamel, and paint keeps homes from the age-old complaint of dampness and dirt, and it won't do no hurt to mention right here that no wax is better than Johnson's because it ain't. <laughs> Why, that's wonderful, Mr. Wilcox. 
I saw it old kumquat. <laughs> That last line seems to be dragging a busted garter, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Listen, don't criticize me, pal, till you explain that high hat business. I come in here perfectly friendly, and you act like a butler in a B picture. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's jolly amusing, isn't it, my dear? Butler in the B cinema. <laughs> I say, old chap, we shall overlook for the nonce the matter of calling cards, shall we not? But, but? <laughs> Step into the drawer. Hey, Joel. Perhaps Mrs. McGee will serve tea. Listen, Mrs. McGee will sit this one out with the boys, dearie. And come off your high horse before you trot under a viaduct. Yeah. Look, pardon my Omaha accent, Molly, but did little chubby here just discover he was Anthony Eden's cousin? I shall tell you, old boy. No, you won't, McGee. I'll tell him. Well, he's found a book of etiquette, Mr. Wilcox, published in 1877. Frankly, I don't see what the English accent has to do with it, but it's probably just his idea of elegance. Well, is it good etiquette to give an old pal the high eyebrow when he drops in for a minute? Oh, come, come, dear boy, come, come. Don't mistake a gentlemanly reserve for stuffy formality. <laughs> After all, the rules of etiquette say, and I quote from page 42, be reserved at all times. A person who makes himself coarsely and offensively familiar will have few friends, and I unquote, <laughs> you keep this up and you can count your friends on the fingers of a catcher's mitt. Well, he's certainly come a long way from Peoria, hasn't he, Molly? He indeed he has. When you first met him, I'll bet... Hey, by the way, how did you first meet him? Oh, we went to grade school and high school together. And a delightful association, my dear, if I may say so. Thank you. Even though in the American public school system... <laughs> one is forced to mix with all the classes. No, 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 no. I mean, how did you meet? Who introduced you? Well, uh, nobody, I guess, Mr. Wilcox. We just... You came... mean you two have never been formally introduced? Oh, I say, old chap. Ma wait a minute. Huh? Married all these years and never been properly? Oh, no. Heavenly days, I never thought... Now, well, look I... here, Junior, if you... Please. Don't address me as Junior. That is a familiarity I reserve for but my friend. Mr. Wilcox, we... I regret to say, Mrs. McGee and Mr. McGee, that you have taken advantage of our business association. Mm -hmm. All these years, you have led me to believe that you two were legally married. And now... Now I discover that you have never even been introduced to each other. What? Yeah, but my gosh, that don't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please consider our acquaintanceship terminated. Good day. Is he... I mean, uh, did he... Was that on the level? Well, it must have been. He was all broken up about it. He could hardly keep a straight face when he went out. This is terrible. <laughs> Wilcox comes from a nice family, and if he thinks we're not legally married because we've never been introduced... Molly, I'm sorry if I've done you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can fix that, dearie. We're both of age. We can introduce ourselves to each other. Yeah, maybe we better... I just looked through the book and it don't say what to do in a situation like this. Who introduces whom to whom? Well, uh, I think the gentleman is always introduced to the lady, so I guess it's up to you, dear. Okay. You just sit there and I'll pretend I'm just walking past, see? Shall I uh, drop my handkerchief or something? Yeah. You know, you've got to have an excuse to speak to me. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> now, remember, you never saw it. <laughs> well, strolling through the park one... Oh, pardon me, madam. Is this your handkerchief? No. Huh? Move on, you masher, before I call a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Come on, Molly. We're supposed to... Do you to... want me to scream? Molly, don't do this to me. Gee whiz. <laughs> Very well. That is my handkerchief, sir. Thank you for returning it. Mm, not at all, babe. Not at all. <laughs> Permit me to knock myself down to you. <laughs> I am Fibber McGee. How do you do, I'm sure. And I am Molly Driscoll. Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure glad we got that taken care now, of. Now, look, dearie, I wish you'd forget you ever saw that book of etiquette. After all, what they thought proper in 1877... Hello there, Molly, darling, and Fibber Oh, hello, Uncle Dennis. Good afternoon, my dear uncle. Won't you have the chair? That I will not, boy. That I will not. And such unusual politeness I've not seen since my days as a diplomat when I was in Cleveland during the presidential campaign for Washington. 
The presidential campaign for Washington. Oh, what am I saying now? I meant I was in Washington during the campaign for Cleveland. <laughs> oh, what a politician I was in those days. The sticky little babies I've kissed. The cigars I've handed out. The ballot boxes I've stuffed. The dirty conniving and double dealing I've done to give the great American public the right man in office. <laughs> And why? Why what? Why are you being so polite? Well, he's got a book of etiquette, Uncle Dennis. He's going to be a gentleman if it kills him, and I can just hear the undertakers rubbing their hands. <laughs> Doggone it, I don't know why everybody has to sneer just because a guy tries to be cool. <laughs> I can't leave a guy alone. I just want to live in a house by the side of the road. And I don't mean tobacco. <laughs> And right you are, lad. Always be a gentleman and avoid the use of profanity, which reminds me of my little brother Brian, who had his mouth washed out with soap so often he was known as Bubble Puss Bisco. <laughs> May his soul go marching on as he was shot in the fracas while innocently engaged while innocently engaged in blowing up a bank in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> As I seem to remember hearing, Uncle Dennis, yours was a very large family, wasn't it? It was that. It was that. Thirteen children there was. My father, not being a superstitious man, peace be to his bones, such as they were. <laughs> Most of them haven't been broken at wakes and county fairs, jail breaks, and other social festivities. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if you'll excuse me... Going out, Uncle Dennis? That I am. You might let us know if you'll be back for dinner, Uncle. Huh? Unless you think little courtesies like that are effeminate. Oh, why, I thought I'd meant to tell you I'll not be back. Oh. I'm invited to a turkey dinner with an old friend. Oh. Yes, a former motorman who's about to be made a conductor as they're electrocuting him tomorrow. <laughs> For the murder of a black-hearted company inspector. Oh. May he be made to count red-hot nickels for over seven million years. And my friend, having his choice of a last meal, chose roast turkey on my advice, as I am very fond of the same with sweet potatoes. Good night to you. Ah, oh, see, where was I? Oh, you paid too close. A gentleman's wardrobe need not be so large as a lady's, but it should be well supplied with drawers to contain neatly folded pantaloons and waistcoats. Pantaloons. I wonder where I could get a hold of a couple of pairs of... Pray enter. Hi, mister. Oh, good afternoon, my child. To what do I owe the pleasure of this extremely gratifying visitation? Oh, I did. Hmm? Come, come, child, come, come. Do not be alarmed at any seeming strangeness. It is merely that I have until now been neglecting the matter of etiquette in my personal contacts. <laughs> I guess I don't dig that jive, mister. <laughs> manners, sis, manners. I'm brushing up on my etiquette. You know what etiquette is. Sure I do, but I doubt if you do. What do you mean? Look, I'm a lady, mister. Huh? A small one, maybe, but a lady, see? Did you get up when I came in? Well, no, but I don't Did see... you offer me a chair on account of me being a weaker sex? No, but I don't see Did what... Did you lay aside that nasty old cigar when a lady entered or asked my permission to smoke? This cigar is one of the finest cigars I Having ever... Having invited me in and therefore being technically your guest, did you offer me a cookie or any refreshments whatsoever, mister? <laughs> well, gee whiz, sis, if you wanted a cookie, did why... Did you or did you not, when I started to leave, precede me to the door, as would any gentleman... Now, look here, sis. No. I no, you did not. So don't peddle that etiquette pistachio to me, mister. <laughs> if you're a gentleman, I'm Eleanor Roosevelt, and I haven't been away from home in two years. <laughs> kind of a little twerp that grows up and spends her life writing letters to the voice of the people. You know, personally, I think she's got something, huh? McGee. Oh. How long you been standing there, Molly? I heard most of it. Not that I meant to eavesdrop, but I think the child really... Mm -hmm. Come in. Enter, by all means. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, my boy. And a very good day to you, Doctor. Won't you have a chair, sir, and let me take your hat and stick? My hat and stick? 
You think I came over here to chalk a billiard cue or something? <laughs> well, McGee's merely trying to be polite, Doctor. He's a gentleman of the old school, holding a one-man reunion. Just a simple touch of courtesy, Doctor. After all, sir, a man of your age is entitled to a certain measure of respect from younger people. Well, thank you, my boy. That's very gratifying. After spending the day having people tell me if there wasn't a shortage of physicians, they wouldn't let me treat a rag doll for sawdust poisoning. <laughs> yeah, it's been a very try... What do you mean, a man of my age, you whippersnapper? Oh, forget it, Doctor. McGee's just overdoing it a little. Overdoing what? Come, come, old fellow. Sir, let us not raise our voices in the presence of a lady. It isn't cricket, you know, sir. Don't let me cramp your style, boys. Forget I'm here. Or forget I'm a lady. Will somebody be so good as to tell me what goes on here? <laughs> Either this dialogue's very bad or I came in in the middle of the picture. <laughs> well, McGee has taken up 1877 etiquette, Doctor. Modern manners aren't good enough for him. He thinks Emily was left at the post. <laughs> I maintain, Doctor, that the world... Oh, so you've suddenly stumbled onto etiquette, have you, McGee? Well, I have, For 40-odd way... years, and I do mean odd. <laughs> you've been fumbling along, breaking crackers in your soup, reading over people's shoulders, inhaling your coffee, wearing brown shoes with your dinner coat, and otherwise making a spectacular bore of yourself. And now you've discovered manners. Why, you hopeless little gutter snipe, you've got less grace than a muscle-bound moose. <laughs> oh, is that so? Now there's what I call a snappy comeback. <laughs> you, you, you make one more nasty crack about my manners... And I'll sink my fist so far into your solar plexus, I'll have to wear you like a bracelet. <laughs> Listen to the poor folks, Superman. <laughs> Why, you torpid little tree toad, if you ever raise a pinky to me, I'll reassemble your silly face till you look like the phantom of your own opera. <laughs> well, now, really, Doc... You and how many Marines? You tonsil burglar, just me, bird brain. If that's all, that's so to 72 decimals. Okay, step outside, Doctor. It'll be a pleasure. Excuse us, Mrs. McGee. One side, Molly. Now, boys, please, I wish He you... asked for it, Mrs. McGee. Come on, gas jet, out you go. <laughs> After you, Doctor. After you, McGee. I'm the host here. After you, Doc. I insist. The guest is always right. But the host always goes last. Not necessarily. What do you bet? Five bucks. It's a bet. Hey, Molly, hand me that etiquette book. Here. Thank yeah. you. Now, let's see, Shall McGee. I make some tea while you boys look it up? Yeah. That'll be swell, Molly. All yeah. right. Let me know what the decision is because I... Ought to be that. right here somewhere. Page 149. Here on the miscellaneous rules of etiquette, McGee. That's it. <laughs> uh, am I in your light, Doc? Well, not a bit. Not a bit. It's quite all right, sir. Interesting book, isn't it? <laughs> not fascinating, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> this item here on page 114 will kill you. Uh -huh. <laughs> it says that in a house where there's no bathroom, place an oil cloth on the floor. <laughs> What kind of polish should I use on floors made of asphalt tile? Someone asked me that question the other day, and I decided I'd better tell everyone. McGee, do you realize next Thursday's Thanksgiving? Oh, my gosh. But I wasn't able to get a turkey. Oh, my gosh. So the butcher promised us a big sirloin steak. Oh, my gosh. That's what I thought. Good night. Good night.